All right. Good morning, KubeCon, Cloud Native Con. Good morning, Jess. All right, let's try that one more time. Good morning, KubeCon, Cloud Native Con. All right. All right. I hope everyone is having a great time. Round of applause if you had a great time on day one. Awesome, awesome. So happy to hear that. We have exciting day two planned for you. Um, but first, I want to ask a question. Show of hands, who remembers the first project that brought them into the Cloud Native Computing Foundation community? Raise of hands. Who, do you remember? No? No one remembers? It's been a long pandemic, so OK. Um, for me, it was about five years ago. And that first project was Kubernetes. So I'm excited to be here now on the keynote stage sharing with you some updates from the Kubernetes project. So that's the first thing we're going to do today. All right, so I'm Jasmine James. I lead developer experience in my current organization. Um, and it's really comprised of helping developers have a seamless experience. My first experience um, with Kubernetes was making sure that developers could adopt it very easily. So I'm excited to share with you some of the recent developments within that project. So how does this work? Every KubeCon, we reach out to the projects and ask, what are some of the cool things that you all are doing? And we get feedback. So this is a result of the feedback that we were provided. This list is not exhaustive. You can always find out more information about Kubernetes and other CNCF projects via Kubernetes IO or the CNCF website. So let's get right into it. The first update is from the steering committee. So what even is a steering committee? It is the group that drives, drives innovation in direction of the Kubernetes project. This includes overseeing and designing how much of the project progresses. And right now, they're working on main, establishing a maintainer sustainability program, along with releasing annual reports. So those annual reports I just mentioned are designed to highlight and deep dive on key areas of focus for the project. And it will also highlight project needs, accolades, and so much more. The steering committee is focused on growing maintainers right now, which brings me to that program I mentioned. They'll be paying special attention to testing, infrastructure, and further community building. And they put out a special ask for reviewers with spe specialties in quality and security. So if you're interested, drop them a line in the Kubernetes channel. Other things in flight include helping folks transition into an owner role of the project or stepping forward to be a project leader. The one thing I really appreciate about Kubernetes is the easy way you can consume their documentation and the clarity on how to contribute. So if you work at an organization that uses Kubernetes, reach out in Slack and get more information on how you can become an active participant. All right, next up, SIG security. So yesterday we found out that 65% of you here today at KubeCon Cloud Native Con EU, it was your first time. So I thought I'd talk about what a SIG was. So a SIG is a special interest group and the Kubernetes version of security takes the community building approach to improving security for the project itself and users by working with other SIGs on documentation and features to make Kubernetes safer. It also helps with security self-assessments for Kubernetes and the sub-projects and periodic third-party code audits, third-party code audits. Recent work included the signing of an official container image, which lays the groundwork for further safety improvements to come and sets an example for how the industry should progress in their software supply chain. Everyone can participate in the improving of the security of Kubernetes together, and you could be the next person to help make Kubernetes safer for everyone. So reach out to this special interest group if you're interested in participating. All right, SIG Node. So SIG Node is another special interest group, and they are responsible for the components that support the controlled interactions between the pods and host resources. Here we have listed some important initiatives, but I'd like to highlight the remover of Docker Shim. So Docker Shim was always intended to be a temporary solution to support the Docker engine, but maintaining this was a huge burden for the Kubernetes maintainers. So the removal was released in Kubernetes 1.24 version, and you can learn more via the Docker Shim removal FAQ and migration guides. C Group V2 is the next version of C Group Linux API. In this version, there is a single hierarchy instead of a different one for each controller. And some of the improvements are a cleaner and easier to use API, safe subtree delegation to containers, and new features like pressure stall information. For more information on how to configure C Group V2, check out the container runtime docs on kubernetes.io. All right, SIG storage, another special interest group update. 
So this group is responsible for ensuring the different types of file and block storage are available wherever a container is scheduled. They're also responsible for storage capacity management, influencing scheduling of containers based on storage, and generic operations on storage. And they made a lot of things available in 1.24 version of Kubernetes. So volume expansion. So this allows users to increase the size of their volumes while keeping their workloads online. This feature allows the users to increase the size of the provision volume only using the Kubernetes PVC API. Setting a larger size in the PVC automatically triggers the expansion of the volume that backs the underlying persistent volume, as well as resizing the file system if needed. Storage capacity tracking takes capacity into consideration when scheduling pods on a node. This feature allows a CSI driver to report storage capacity and lets the Kubernetes scheduler use that information to make more intelligent decisions when choosing a node for a pod. Ongoing for many releases now, CSI migration allows Kubernetes to migrate entry volume plugins to out-of-tree CSI drivers. Using CSI drivers allows for better maintainability and reduces the support for the reduces the opportunity for vulnerabilities. <laughs> Big difference. <laughs> Um, cluster operators can also only select the storage drivers that their cluster requires. So what does this group need? More contributors. For information on how to get involved, check out their GitHub project, or you can join their Slack channel at sig-storage. All right, SIG cluster lifecycle. So this special interest group examines how we should change Kubernetes to make it easier to manage and operate with a focus on cluster, cluster deployment and upgrades. It's an exciting time for Cluster API because they have re reached production readiness with the 1.0 release. Cluster API enables declarative management for Kubernetes using API, using an, making it easy to create, configure, and update clusters. This simplify, simplifies the, ready, the repetitive tasks of Kubernetes lifecycle while maintaining consistency and reliability. The whole goal of this special interest group in Cluster API is to make Cluster lifecycle boring. Basically, not think about it. So if you're interested in contributing to making Cluster Lifecycle the most mundane activity ever, you can reach out via Slack at SIG Cluster Lifecycle. Lastly, SIG Scheduling. So this group is responsible for the components that make pod replacement decisions in Kubernetes. Recent initiatives include performance improvements, including pod schedule latency and throughput. There also was the launch of a new working group focusing on enhancing batch workloads. This is relevant for HPC, AI, ML, data analytics, CI, among others. Finally, the scheduler plugins subproject, which now includes 10 plugins addressing features like co-scheduling, load-based scheduling, and elastic quotas. The most relevant impact has been the improvements in the scheduling throughput. It can now achieve 300 pods per second, according to tests conducted by SIG Scalability. Interested in learning more? Reach out to SIG Scheduling at SIG Scheduling in Slack. And that is it for the Kubernetes updates. Hope you have a great rest of KubeCon.